Hi. In today's video, we're going to be talking about MuleSoft deployment models. Specifically, one of our deployment models called Runtime Fabric. You'll oftentimes hear this referred to as RTF. Now with the Runtime Fabric deployment model, we actually have two different flavors. One would be a self-managed Kubernetes, where you're actually going to bring your own Kubernetes. The other one, which is what we'll talk about today, is actually our appliance model. So now when we have our, our Runtime Fabric, the way that we're going to define this is by our, where our manage, or who manages our management plane. which is going to be MuleSoft, and who manages the runtime plane. In this case, it's a little bit different than other models because in this case, we actually have an appliance which is going to be provided by MuleSoft. But the applications themselves are going to be managed by the customer. So now, with that being said, let's take a quick look and see what is this actually going to look like when we actually implement this, this uh, on a customer's data center. So firstly, we're going to just draw out our customer data center. Now, when I say customer data center, there are multiple different options of what we can what we could be referring to there. So this could be Amazon's AWS, Google's GCP, could be Azure, or maybe even just a bare metal uh, server. But there are multiple other ones that we could have as well. So now that we have our data center, there's a few different things that we, we're going to talk about with this. So essentially, there are there's the management plan or the uh, appliance, which is actually going to allow the customer to be able to uh, to run the run the uh, runtime fabric and deploy Docker and Kubernetes, so they can have containerized uh, applications. So in this case, we're going to have a series of servers that are actually going to be controlling everything. So in this case, we're going to call these, uh, each one of these are going to be an individual server. And one thing to note with this is that there needs to be an odd number of, of these servers because these ones are the ones that are really going to be making the decisions for for all of the for everything that's going on and so you need to have an odd number so that you can have a quorum in case there's a any kind of a tie between the the decision making processes so in this case we're going to refer to these as controller nodes now with that being said, this is what's actually going to be controlling everything. So the, these are ones, uh, you know, kind of the brains of the operation, if you will. The next thing that we want to talk about are what we call our worker nodes. So down here, we'll talk about worker nodes. And essentially what these nodes are going to be are these are where our actual applications are going to run. So with these ones, there's a limit of about 16 different nodes that you can have within there. Um, you can have less than that, but you can't have more than that. Um, but each one of these is where we're actually going to be deploying our applications. Each one of, the, each one of these uh, nodes, uh, you can deploy a fairly large number of, of applications on there. There is a, there is a limit. Uh, to them, but it's mostly going to be garnered by the actual uh, uh, horsepower that you actually have on there. So the amount of CPU and, um, and memory that you have for the individual servers, and it's available for all of these. With that being said, 
One of the beauties of this model is that all of these individual applications are all containerized. So unlike the on-premise edition of, the, of this uh, where we have a customer hosted uh, data center or customer hosted runtimes where all the applications have their own um, or are shared uh, by the resources so they all will share the CPU memory and uh, storage. Each one of these will have its own CPU and memory, and you can actually have your own runtimes on each one of these as well. So each one of these, you could have different runtime versions all within the same node. You could have different amounts of memory allocated to each individual uh, application, different amounts of CPU allocated to each one of these. Um, the only thing you're really gonna be limited by are the number of cores that you have available to you uh, via your subscription. So that's really gonna be more of a commercial type discussion. So here we actually have, you know, what it's going to look like in the customer data center. Now the question that we, the next question we wanna have is, you know, how do we actually go and manage this? So right now we've got the, we've got the, everything running on premise, but we need to make sure that we can connect up to our management plane. So this is where we're gonna have our Cloud Hub management services. And so essentially what's gonna happen here is this is going to be connecting up to our controller nodes. And in turn, each one of these controller nodes are going to be able to manage all of our individual worker nodes. So really what's gonna be happening is when we go in and we have our management services, we're gonna go through and say, okay, let's, you know, we're gonna be able to manage our controller nodes. In turn, they're gonna be able to manage the workers. So you're gonna be able to manage all of our applications we have deployed down here via our Cloud Hub management services. So now we have our applications actually, you know, running, but we don't really have them connected up to any data sources. So if we were to go and look at this, you know, we might have some cloud data sources. And so essentially these would be able to be connected up to, you know, these individual applications. You know, not everything is going to be connected up to the cloud. Um, some of them might have multiple ones. Some of them might not reach out at all. But we also are gonna have customer data sources. And then these individual applications, you know, might be, need to be able to connect up down here. So with that being said, from a high level perspective, we have our runtime fabric appliance model where Runtime Fabric Appliance is gonna be able to help you manage these to deploy Docker and Kubernetes within your own environment so that you can have containerized runtimes. The management plane is still gonna be managed by MuleSoft, but the applications themselves will be managed by the customer. Um, you could have these be any of the, in any type of data center that you want, be it AWS, GCP, Azure, bare metal, VMware, whatever it may be, and you'll need to enable the connectivity from all the different systems. So with that being said, this is our Runtime Fabric Appliance uh, model. Thank you and have a great day.